I thought we need to do a video where I sit on that side and I act like I'm you. I mean, I do a British accent. <laughs> if you want to do that, I'll do I, that with I you. I think it would be hilarious. I got to practice though a little bit. <laughs> Good night, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's funnier though. I think having not practiced and just like, is it, uh, is it Australian? Is it Italian? Are you I from, don't know. where are you from, Alexander? <laughs> Southampton. Are you sure? <laughs> Austria. Put another trip on the barbie, mate. Yeah. Uh, where are you from? Australia. Or Austria. Throw the trip I'm, I'm on the barbie. Austria. Yeah. That's such a good. <laughs> So, I still love that movie so today. Dumb. I would watch that again and again. <laughs> Your hands are freezing, Lloyd. Hey, take, take one of my gloves. Yeah, take one of my extra pair of gloves. <laughs> my hands are sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> they rode for hours on that stupid bike. I just, it's the bit where they stand up and he's frozen to his mouth. Oh, it's just it, awesome. You just, it's so, it's, it's so stupid. It's so, it's so stupid, funny. but it's so good. <laughs> So welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. <laughs> and I'm Grant. And today we're taking uh, some time out of our day. <laughs> yes, I saved that sentence to uh, record our monthly debrief for February. Are you okay? No, I'm <laughs> high on chicken wings. Well, that's true. We had a lot of chicken wings. Uh, and carrots. I had a lot of carrots. You didn't need any carrots. No. I you need to really look out for your health more, Alexander. I, oh, that's definitely true. Veg vegetables are your friend. I, I looked at the carrots, <laughs> so I'm like one step closer yeah, to eating well, the carrots. Did you touch a carrot? Uh, today I did not. Because some of the vitamin D, I think, can actually absorb into your skin if you just touch it. Well, what I was hoping is, is that by looking at them, <laughs> the light that bounces off the carrots and goes into my would eyes would eyesight. pick up okay. some of those uh, goodies that are in vegetables. That ain't the work it, way it works, man. Well. We're off to a heck of a start here. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> No idea what's going on. <laughs> so, uh, this is our debrief of February. Um, February, the shortest month of the year. Although, although this year. It was a leap year. Yeah. So it's the longest February we've had in a long time. We have leap years at every four years? Yes. Okay. But yeah, it's every fourth year is a leap year, I okay. think. Uh, so we got 29 days in, uh, and it didn't make a blind bit of difference to our gaming. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like we did have a really fun month of games no that we've played this, this, this month. I almost feel like I have a fun game month every month, though. Yeah, but I, but I do feel like there are some months where, like, when we really don't get together very much, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, we maybe played two big games together, and the rest of it was, like, solo stuff. It's like, yeah, we played some war games and stuff. But we played I, a lot of games this I, month. Yeah, I, think, I yeah. feel like we're in a really good groove at the moment. We're knocking yeah. out some, like, really good games classic games yeah and i think the games that we've been playing have just all been like pretty good quality and so i think <laughs> i'm like riding a high of like <laughs> we're not in one of those mediocre slumps which sometimes sure. it's like gosh i because i i do think that our luck is sometimes streaky with those games mm -hmm. we're like well mo most of the games we play we'll have a penchant for enjoyment because we like to see the positive stuff in games, and like I can see things that I like. Yeah. But every so often it's like, ah oh, man, that was mediocre. And then we'll play another one, like, oh no. Yeah. And then the, then the third one, you're like, oh, do I like this? And then all of a sudden, you you spent half a month of like, uh, it was okay, I guess. Yeah. But like, I feel like we've just played some like mm -hmm. really solid games recently, and no I'm, doubt. I'm and I'm having a good time. Yep. So uh, let's let's dive on in then. What did we actually play in February? Okay. Well, the the big the number one. Guys <laughs> hurt. We're gonna talk about. Sorry, there's lots of games today. It's late tonight too, though. So, sorry. Yes. I'm tired. So we have Dune War for Arrakis. And good game. Uh, yeah, which ooh, look at this. It still <laughs> says Dune. Whoa. Uh, this is from. Uh, Cool mini or not, I refuse to say see him on, or refuse to say come on. Yeah. It's just, it's cool mini or not. Anyway, uh, this is one of those big area control miniature style games. It's from the design team that brought you War of the Ring 2nd Edition and War of the Ring 1st Edition um, and the Battle of Five Armies. I want to see the names. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, Nepotello. Yep. Same names. Uh, uh, yeah, I was. Um, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And so it uses. Sorry that I doubted you. No, no, no. It was the carrots. Yes, that's fair. 
Uh, I have, yes. I have really enjoyed playing this. Mm -hmm. We've played it now four times since we got it off Kickstarter in January. Yep. And it's just a riot to play. We played it a bunch two player, but yep. in February we were able to get some friends down and we played it four player. Which and I actually really liked it. Yes, four me player. Too. I thought it was very, very good. It worked out very well. Like and and we won with the Atreides. That's that's really why our we first, liked it. Yeah, it was our first kind of victory with them. This game is very difficult for the Atreides. It I is. Think. Especially when you put in the expansions, Ugh. which definitely have some uh, favoring towards the Harkonnen. Well, it, it's so interesting because we played finally with the Smugglers. Yes. Right? I, I would say never use that expansion. It's cool, but <laughs> it's I felt like it more... made the Harkonnens even more powerful. Yeah. That's my Especially opinion. Especially early game. Where it's like They don't need it. Yeah. That should have been for the Atreides. That, that's and, what I think. And, and it's like kind of supposed to be towards it's the not. end, but you have so much more hurdles to overcome that that puts in before you get any kind of benefit. We only have a certain amount of actions. You can't spend time doing these other things to yeah, get them on your side. You just can't. But anyway, this game is a blast. Yep. There's a review for this. Coming up soon. Coming so up soon. It, I it, it posted won't be that. up before this video is up, but it, it is in the next like, couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I enjoy it. I love the yeah. theme. It's got that same core system that's really fun to play. Two player, uh, four player was really enjoyable. It was. It's I, effectively a team game and you cut everything in half. Yeah. I had fun well, with it. I enjoyed the team play because you and I were kind of strategizing together and, and I enjoy that. Yes, me too. Because I think from time to time you saw things that I wasn't necessarily seeing and vice versa. And and that's cool. And you get to use the little cone of silence and you kick do. the other team out. That's that was fun. fun. It's just silly. We did that a couple of times. So. So yeah, we, we played that a couple of times. And then we also, that same day, with that same group, we played yes. Santa Monta. Well, pl played is a loose term. We we did one turn. It, yeah, it took us a few hours. And it last, lasted about two and a half, almost three hours. So it was more of like a learning experience. Um, there is kind of an initial impressions video of this mm -hmm. coming up because there's a lot of um, chit-chat about this game. It's new. This is uh, a prequel to Here I Stand. Yeah. It uses that same core system in it, mm -hmm. um, but it's got a lot of differences from Here I Stand from Virgin Queen. Uh, not a game for the faint of heart, but also not a game that you should throw to the side because it's too good. No, and, and, and it's interesting. I think, I think the word of the day with this game is complexity. Yeah. I, I, I think it is very complex. And it has a lot of exceptions and extra things and rules and, but but the reality is, if you enjoy Here I Stand and if you enjoy Virgin Queen, like we do, this is the next iteration of that, and it just changes it a little bit, but it feels familiar. Yes, there's a level of familiarity with it, yes. which our ex past experience helps with getting into yes. a game that's 65 pages of rules. But I really enjoyed what we were doing. Down. Yep. The other people at the table. This game did, was not for them. Yeah, did, didn't enjoy it as much, but that was their first experience with Here I Stand, Virgin Queen, and, and I get it. Oh, yeah. A and I knew it would be challenging. This is like a Mount Everest-style learning curve if you've never touched one of these games. Yeah. Uh, but it, uh, so I appreciate them sticking with us with it. And, yeah, and kind of Russ and Jacob, and I really it. appreciated that they tried, and I, I think we could play that again, and it would be very different. We, we oh, kind yeah. of picked things up with them, now, what I want to do is I want to get our group together in St. Louis that we have played, here I stand, how many times? Three or four times? Because they would love this, they, and they'd be they able would. to jump in really yep. kind of into the deep end like and, we were. And Mike is one of those guys that he'll read all the rules, and he'll he'll create little extra sheets to help, and, and, and it'll make it yeah. that much better. But I did enjoy this. I, I, I enjoyed I, it a lot. I'm going to be honest, really enjoyed it. It's a beautiful game. Yes. I wish they would now go back, adopt this same... What happened? Absolutely. What? Here I Stand is hideous. Oh, it's terrible. Let's pretend that's not the case. Yeah, I thought you were disagreeing with me no. or something. But I go back... And the art, I, it's fine. The, but the, the, the cover on the map oh is Oh, my great. gosh. Beautiful. They've just redone everything. The color it's palette's just nice. so beautiful. Here, here I stand is just, it's 1990 style. It's, it's bad. It's just not great. There's no two ways about it. Like, so please, GMT, it nice. if I had one wish, it would be go back 
and do the 510th anniversary of yes. Here I Stand, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Uh, might be 511 now. But please go back and redo that because I, I think I would buy... I would definitely buy it. And I think there is a lot of people who are fans of that game that would. Uh, yeah. So, But I enjoyed Tanto Monta. I am working yes. on a first impressions post and I'm very hesitant about it because I'm trying not to go too deep but it's almost impossible not to go too deep because yes. the game is complex. Very. And I, but I'm enjoying writing it because I'm remembering things that we did. I just, I need to sit down for about another hour and I think I can knock it out. Yeah. But that was fun. I'm glad we played it. What else did we play uh, this month? Yes. We played as part of our Shelf of Shame dust off. Uh, we played Baptism by Fire. Uh, which is from Multiman Publishing. It's, part, it's the gamers, the gamers BCS yeah. series, Battalion Combat series. There's a full video of this coming out in a few weeks or months. <laughs> this is game number two in that system. Yes. Right, and we've played Aracourt and this one. And this one. And we own most of the others. Yeah, we have we have acquired <laughs> most of the others. Brazen Chariots, Panzer's Last Stand, Valley of Tears. What was the other one that I think we... You also have another one. I do. I think um, the only one we don't have is the Iron, last Blitzkrieg. Uh, yes, you have Iron, Iron Curtain. Curtain. Or was that SCS? I think that's SCS. It's SCS. I, okay. I think there's six BCS games. I feel like that's true. So I... It, anyway. Yeah, there is. This game is so very good. Yes. The scale, to me, is fascinating. Yep. It, it's, it's between... The, the, the operational and the but it, grand but it strategic. But it really is an operational game. I, I would agree. At the scale, and, and I but love it, it. But it feels like it's in between for several different reasons. It's focus on supply, and the way it uses supply is utterly fantastic and interesting. Yeah, without being burdensome. No, it's a it, massive consideration, but it's not mathematical. It's not hard to understand when you're supply is going to be affected. And your supply affects your ultimate activations. And, and that's what's so cool, because every other game that does supply, it's like, oh... I'm in supply! You get half attack factors, yeah. and half... Like, the way that supply affects you in this game is so much more interesting than every other game that recycles the same out of supply and isolate yeah. effects, let's be honest. You know, it's interesting. OCS takes supply to another level, right? Because you've got yeah. extenders, you've got... That's a supply game. Throwing of supply into combat. This really is about the activation, and then the supply doesn't really play much of another... much role in the game, right? Yeah. You do your snafu roll, and it's negative based on, oh, I don't have... Based on all that supply I, I have crossing the streams, and I'm going I'm across it. difficult terrain. And my combat and, trains are in ghost mode. Yep. So I get a negative three, and all of a sudden I roll, and oh, I only got a partial activation. Or, in your case... A fail. Very roll, first roll of the game, DAC, rolled a two? I rolled... A three. I rolled a three, it was down to a two. Yeah. Down to a two, negative one. You couldn't activate. And you were heart in the middle of the Kazarine Pass. Yeah, it was, a, it was a traffic jam for the rest of the game. And it ended up allowing me as the allies to kind of get down, get in position, hold you up so that you couldn't ultimately get the victory points that you needed. Fascinating narrative, fascinating yeah. outcome because of the supply-based system and Yeah, mechanics. and it's just a totally different way to look at war games. And it's, yeah. it's as such, it's quite complicated. But it's no more complicated than any other game, but because it's so different, it feels like it's like learning something new, a new language almost. Well, it is complex. I, 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 feel, I, I feel like this is a really solid system that anybody can oh, get. Yeah. yeah. SCS is simpler. Standard oh, combat series. Yeah, that's very simple. But I think this is very playable. Yeah, you just... Very playable. You've got to change your mindset. Yes. And... I would agree. I think in most other war games, you can bring a lot of assumed knowledge to it, and this one... You kind of got to go back to yeah. and like learn it from square one. I would 100% agree with uh, that. So, yeah, this was excellent, but this was part of our uh, shelf of shame. Yep. Dust off. So, we've had that game for how long? Uh, a we bought years? it at WBC in 2021, I think. And when is that originally from? Is it, from it was like 2016 or 2017. Yeah. So, we've done two games in that kind of dust off series so yep. far. Check, 
check. So I feel good that yep. we didn't lose momentum in that already. And we've kept that uh, resolution at, at least through two months of yes. the year. Um, what else did we play together? I think together? that's all we played together. Because uh, yeah, you're we, right. We 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 did, we did Dune a few times when maybe yeah. we should have not should have. Been well, and and we played how many uh, Andy and Abyss uh, oh, votes gosh. for women? Yeah. All, all that stuff on Rally the Troops. I think I've got ten or twelve games going. I'm playing a few games of um, Waterloo Campaign from Mark. See, I still haven't really played that one much. I won my first game of it, and I have been crushed in every other one since. <laughs> and I'm, and it's me and the same opponent. Okay, and I'm trying to like. Figure out. I have both very bad dice rolling in that game, but I'm also trying to like push and do different things. Yeah. Uh, so it's really interesting, that's for sure. But Rally the Troops, I, I love Rally the Troops. I, I have a dozen games going at any given time, and they're just fun. You yeah. know, Time of Crisis, Votes for Women, um, Andy and Abyss. I'm also playing through Table Battles. Okay, so I'm. Uh, and I, I need to get onto that. And one. I'm doing the historical expansions because we have them, but we've. I think we've only ever played the base game. Right. And so I'm. I'm just playing through all of those chronologically. There's okay. like 25 scenarios of wow. stupid like that. And so that's fun to like see the thematic packs. Yeah. And to play through those. Some of them are really big and take a really long time. Sure. Time. And then some of them it's like. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you know that they uh, just released their new one called Doomed? Yes. So it's Table Battles Doomed expansion. It's it's something like Forlorn Hopes and, you know, against the odds. And it's like, you're going to lose. It's just, how badly are you going to lose? Like, yeah. one side's going to get decimated. Did you survive long enough to not be embarrassed? Yes, basically. And it looks really good. I. I would love to get it. We need to probably get our hands on a on a copy. But yeah, Table Battles is great. Uh, what did you play solo? Because I, I played some so, solo. Yeah, so Solitaire in February, I did a couple things. So I played, uh, so this is C3i issue 37. It's Just came out. New, um, yes. And so there's like three and a half games in this. Which um, is crazy to me. I know, there's, there's a lot really in this one. really pushing the envelope. And, and, you know, there's also... Um, a new card variant for Red Flag over Paris. Yes, which is on Rally the Troops, which yep. is the only way that I've ever played it on there, pretty much. And I would never play without it. So having yeah. it in print now is really good. But uh, there's a game in here called The Spanish Road, and it is this little solitaire game, and you are... Um, you're, you're the Spanish army in, like... The, Trying to get to, like, Flanders or yeah, Netherlands. Yeah, I think it was in, like, the... 1600s. Yeah. And and so it's... Oh, it probably says it on the... No, it doesn't. No. It's a game of, like, moving across the map, defeating armies, and conquering, um, like, fortresses. Yeah. And, and building a little supply train and trying not to, like, get that... It's crushingly difficult. Yeah. Uh, but it's a fun little kind of micro game almost, but they've made a really nice map for it and made it a little bit sizier. And I'm, I'm going to play that game. It's, it's by Daniel Hernandez. He's a newer designer and... And uh, l looks really good. You didn't do any other solo games? The other solo gaming that I did was... Okay. Um, I have, I have uh, actually under the table, just down on this end of it, I have Great Battles of Julius Caesar that I'm playing. Specifically, I'm playing the Invasion of Britannia scenario. And partly that's because I'm reading Julius Caesar's Gallic War. Oh, okay. Um, which are... Uh, on our Patreon Slack channel. Yeah, what is this book club that... It's very loose. Okay. So we have, a, on the Patreon-only Slack channel, there's a little book channel on there where we just, mostly people are talking about the history books that they're reading. And last year, we were like, well, let's just do like a group read. That'd be fun. And so I put up a few books, and we voted on which one that we wanted to read. And the first one that we read was... Uh, it was um, with the old breed. Oh, okay, by, yeah. By uh, E.B. Sledge. Yeah. We read that last summer, and it was really fun, and everyone, like, we, you know, read it by a certain date, and everyone shared their kind of experiences and okay. opinions. It was fun. Then we read um, Storm of Steel, which is a World War I memoir um, over Christmas, 
And uh, someone else was like, hey, when are we doing another one? So I was like, well... Do Julius Caesar. We, but yeah, well, we voted and everyone decided okay. I'm like, sweet. So I, I was really inspired to kind of get this out because this has been sat on the shelf of shame. <laughs> For a year or two. Uh, and, and it's got such cool scenarios in it. I've got the simple GBOH rules, which I'm using yeah. in conjunction with well, it. Well, we, we have played SPQR together and I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was, a, it was a good time. So I would love to, you know, after you play it, if we want to... Put a scenario up and but it's, would love to. I, I feel like having been reading those books, mm -hmm. these battles are, are much more meaningful of like, Got oh, it. I understand the context of them instead of it That's being, cool. here's my line of guys and here's right. your line of guys on a plane. They kind of are that, but having the wider context from the book has been <laughs> really I, I, illuminating. Isn't that kind of one of the things that's cool about wargaming is it's yeah. based in history. Yeah. You can read about it. And then you play it out on the table, or the other way around, right? You play a game, you're and like, then you read about I want to read a book about that, and yeah. so that gives you a broader context. So this has been really fun to kind of play with. It's still set up. I'm going to finish it probably this I, week. I wish I had more time to read. I just between my children, obviously I'm married, and then our addiction here to board gaming. Yeah. It just see, I, I just hate my children and neglect my wife. No, I get so it. That's why I, I can it. read. I get it. No, I get it. <laughs> Uh, l let's talk about the solo games that I played. I played you, a ton. You did a lot, yeah. I did a ton of solo games this month. I, I feel like I, I'm going to be honest. I, I played I played this one three times. It is really hard. Uh, this is Global War, 1939 to 45, World War II, Worldwide, uh, by Ben Madison. So this is that horizontal states of siege series where units build up in an area rather than going down a track, and then they blitz you. In this one, it's Blitz. In the World War One one, it was over the top. Um, but it's a really cool game. Very long. This is like 30 turns, so it's, it's a long game. Is it like two or three hours? Oh, it's like three hours. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I play slow. Sure, right? I sure. kind of think through things. But I, and think that's, I think that's the joy of solo game. Take it at your own pace. Agreed. But I, I finally did a video review. I was not going to do a playthrough for this because it was just too much. It, it honestly was just too much. They printed they printed their logo upside down. Oh no! But Didn't like, even notice that. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh no! It's, just it's right it side up there. Yeah. Oh but, bummer. But it's not like if I was like, oh, is that a oh. feature of why they do well, that? Well, then that one's that one's straight up. up and, that was, oh, that's. But odd. Th that I can understand, right? I want to store it this way. Sure. I don't know. It, anyway, don't know. <laughs> really good game. I did a video review on this. You've got it. It's I, coming out in a, yeah. several. We months have away. videos out to like the end of April already. Yeah. It's, it's I, not I also good. got and played Gift of the Nile. It's not in the box. It's set up because I'm on my third game, and when I'm done with that third game, I'm going to shoot a full playthrough, and I'm and it's a three-hour game too. So are you I, actually going to do a full playthrough? Of it? I don't know. Okay. I may just do a, a do four a or five times. turns. Okay. Because I just want people to understand, it, it actually is a complex game, but it's not that bad once you get into it. And this is based on Mound Builders. So Mound Builders from 2014, States of Siege series from Victory Point Games, uses the same iteration of that States of Siege. So the first you know, 10 turns, you have the run of things, and you're going out and you're building your kingdom, and you're expanding and getting resources, and you get all the gold, and then everybody comes after you and you got to just survive. And, and it's just really good. And it's about ancient Egypt, gift of the Nile. I just think it's really good. Um, working on a first impressions post of that. And then I had a blast with Stuka Leader. I played two full scenarios and I, both of them were short, going to be honest. I started then a new middle scenario and I said, you know what? I understand the game well enough. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a video review and move on. But one of the things I've always been impressed, and you know this, by these leader series games, there is more player agency and player choice in these games than almost any solitaire game I've ever played. Yeah. You have a certain amount of points, you can build your units, you can give them skills, you can give them upgraded aircraft, you can even upgrade their skill level at the beginning of these missions, but you only have a certain amount of points. But you get to spend them how you You get want. to choose that. And it makes the game so eminently replayable. There are like 15 different scenarios in this, and then you can link them together in a campaign. It's insane. And this takes the leader series to the next level. You played Zero Leader. Yes. You play, We played Corsair Leader yep. together. It, it, it just adds to that. There's actually a tactical dogfighting, which actually is a little clunky. That, which that's in Corsair and Zero, which is... 
Yeah. I feel like it's a little clunky, but I, I get why people want it. And it is pretty cool. It just adds a lot of time to the game. Yes. Whereas I compare it to something like Hornet Leader or Phantom Leader. Yeah. The actual flight missions take about 10 minutes because yeah, it's just, yeah, it's rolling dice for missiles. But yeah. like, that, those games, you, I, you race through them. This I, one's a bit, they're a bit slow, these World Yeah, I feel ones. like turns are 20 to 25 minutes. But I really enjoyed it. I actually had a really good time with it. I enjoyed it a lot. This one is actually more well-produced than a lot of their other ones. And you can see it's a huge box and it is chock full of stuff. Uh, yes. So I, I really enjoyed this. I did a video review of the, I'm assuming it'll be out in the yeah, next six or eight weeks. Come out at some point. Um, but I was I was glad I played it. Um, Flying Tiger's Leader is one that I really want to. Yes. I hope that's I mean, good. Who doesn't want to fly P forties in in the Pacific. In China, right? It's in I, I'm just so excited about that. I I, I don't know. It just looks interesting. So those were my solitaire games for the month. Yeah, I think that's everything that we played in the month. Yeah. Yeah. Which was a lot, right? It was. It, it really was. Do we want to talk about what we want to play? Yes. Or what we are planning to play? So we have a, a number of things. So let's start off with uh, our uh, Shelf of Shame dust off for March. Uh, we're going to play Diem Bien Fu, The Final Gamble. Uh, this is from Kim Kanga put out by Legion War Games. This is one of those games, yeah. right? Everyone's like, it's incredible, you have to play it. It's the it's the kind of, the mini supply sub game is incredible apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's one of those games, I've had it on the shelf for at least three or four years. Well, and we bought it because everyone yeah. speaks so highly of it. And, and so, you know. And I'm, wanted to play it. I'm, I'm just very, excited to play this one yeah. and you know the game is 13th of march to 17th of may it's march. playing it in march so that's we, we, kind of what we we're actually, trying to do yeah baptism by fire was in february and it, it the event happened in february this one is in march our first one our den 44 it was basically done uh, yeah that's by, the, by the end of uh, december uh, but, uh, but we have another bulge game for actual December. So, so was... we, yeah, but I'm really looking forward to this one. I've heard a lot of good yeah. things about it, and we're going to play that here. I've in... had it punched and clipped for like four yeah. years. I think we're playing that in two weeks, right? Yes. We've got another game we're going to try to play before it. But yeah, Dien Ben Fu. So really looking forward to that. Next up, we are going to play Downfall which is a game that I played in February mm -hmm. and I had forgotten and I knew there was something else. Yeah. Um, so Downfall Conquest of the Third Reich from GMT Games. This is going to be the last 2023 game that we play. Yes. After we play this next week, uh, we'll probably record our top 10 games of 2023. Yeah. Yeah. And I will put that out as soon as humanly possible. So, and, you know, everyone's top 10s came out in December, but we are often much later because... Well, this came out in December. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I, I wanted to play it. We this don't is have one that I wanted to play. To get to play everything the same day. Yeah. So it takes, you know, to Months, give those last sometimes. games a chance mm -hmm. without neglecting them. But that's part of why ours yep. are kind of later on. But um, Ed, who's a friend of the show, he, um, he has a copy of this and he brought it over very early in February. And we sat down and we played it during the day, and it was really good. Mm -hmm. You will love this. Oh, I'm sure I will. It, 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 this is, I mean, it's it's so good. It's such a fun war game. Yeah. And I think some war games get like bogged down in like the historiosity and in like the detail and minutia. This game never pretend, never forgets to be fun. The, yeah, this is a strategic level, right? Uh, or, yeah. yeah. But like, it's a race game. Sure. And and having a war game that is literally a race game feels is, very different. Yeah, <laughs> from most of what you're trying to do, where you're moving methodically, or you're trying to like do a thing and arrange your forces. Right, well, you got to get to Berlin first. Yeah. <laughs> and so you go on like whole hog, but the way the initiative system works mm -hmm. is delicious. Uh, you're gonna love that. Okay. And it, it, it's just really, really cool. And the choices that you're faced with are really interesting. Well, and this is a collaboration between Chad Jensen, who is deceased. Yeah, I think this was one of the last games that he was kind yeah. of working on. And, and John Butterfield. So uh, two great designers that I'm sure this one is going to be fantastic. Yeah, you, Very you, much looking forward to it. It's almost that's the dream team. And yeah. it's, it, uh, yeah, 
This well, is, and, and this having is, a lot of staying power. I don't remember the name of the game, but there is a game that this is based on from like twenty years ago. Yeah, uh, it's so it, it's not it's necessarily called. a novel idea, but literally, if you're playing the 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 Soviets, you are controlling the Western yes. theater Germans. Yep. Correct. Yep. And then if you are playing the Americans and the British. You're then playing the Eastern Front Germans. Yes. So it, it, it's it's yeah. You're, it's, you're it's trying to rush unique. your and stuff and stymie the opponent. Yeah. And doing that is such so a fun cool. exercise. Yeah. And I I'm a little upset because you're going to understand things, and I bet you kicked no. That but what total that means me. is uh, sure. Yeah. But what that also means is that it's we like we kind of worked through the rules. He'd read them, but mm -hmm. like having played it, I'm like, okay, yeah, it's, it. it'll be really quick. Okay, teach. good. Go ahead and grab all those so we don't... Yeah, it's just so... Uh, yeah. Okay, so next up we have uh, Ilau 1807 from Sound of Drums. This is... Beautiful game, by the way. A stunning game. Absolutely beautiful. And it's a huge, big Napoleonics battle game. Yeah. Is this a 24? This just came out I'm in pretty sure. January. We're going yep. to say it is, even if it's not. Yep. Uh, but it is a stunning production. Yep. And Napoleonics is something that I feel like we're dabbling our toes in it a bit more. Yep. And part of it is, is that we're getting really new, really nice, well-produced games that kind of make it that extra little bit more attractive to yep. kind of dive on in as well. Um, which is funny because I think there's like three ILL games that came out yeah. or are coming out. Yeah. It's just funny how those things work. Yep. They kind of come in twos or threes. Yeah. But it looks stunning. Yep. Uh, Sound of Drums are a newer war game company. Well, and, and, and I'm going to be honest, their first game, we played a prototype copy and it just did not go well. Yes. The prototype copy we got was not complete. The rules were not complete. We got the wrong ver... It was just kind of one of those disasters. Yeah, everything that could go wrong did and yeah. we bounced off of it and it was... So, that was it, a shame. It, it was because I do think that game was interesting and unique but <laughs> we couldn't get past the problems that we, we were had. guessing at how to play it. Yeah, and, and that's never a good thing. But now since they've got Ilau and then they have this 1793 Patriots and Traitors yes. game that just came off of <laughs> looks awesome. Kickstarter or Game Found. It's a card driven game on the French Revolution. And it just looks amazing. This looks amazing. This, this is like. That they kind of have put this. This is looks stunning. It does. And the rules of rich and deep. This is a massive game. Yep. And I couldn't be more excited. To yeah, I'm very excited. It. And the production value is just really off the yeah. chain. So uh, next up we have uh, Atlantic Sentinels. I will probably play this solo. Maybe we can play it together. That'd be great. Well, I I want to learn it, and then I would I would love to play it solo because yeah. this one looks really unique. Greg's done a lot of these narrative style. Solitaire war games, yes. sub games, and air war games, interceptor ace, and night fighter ace. This one's just different. It's it's literally about the yeah your convoys. You're an Atlantic convoy, and your yeah. destroyers trying to protect them. And it's it's this big defensive game instead of some of the other ones where it's like you know go out and hunt and find someone. Very yeah. different. I'm very, I'm very yeah. excited to play this one. That's for sure. It just looks really cool. So, Atlantic Sentinels from Compass Games. So yeah. this one just came out. I think yeah. we got it a couple, two, three weeks ago. And then uh, we are also going to. We well, did. We played it today. Uh, play the Battle of Five Armies from Ares. No, it's the Battle of Five Armies, The Hobbit. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and. Uh, so, you know, we talked about June earlier. We've played War of the Ring in the past. Mm -hmm. This has been on the shelf of Shane. We and, bought this uh, two years ago. And it's like, well, let's just play it. Yep. And so we did. So now we've played kind of all of that trilogy of games. Same yeah, design yeah. team, same mm -hmm. kind of core system. This was really fun to play. There's, we did a re review of it. So there'll yep. be a review of this coming for a game that's 10 years old. Well, and... and we're playing it this month, but we've already played it. I had a blast with it. Yeah. I, I, and it really makes cool. me want to play War of the Ring again. Yes. And in fact, I got today, I got on Noble Knight Games, and I was looking <laughs> for the expansions yes. for War of the Ring because I have one of the expansions, but there's like a new one, and then there's at least two others that I'm like, but they're all out of print, and they're so expensive. Yeah. 
but I probably will get the new one because I think it, it adds some very cool stuff. We'll, we'll see, but that is a game I would like to play yeah. just maybe in the next six or eight months. I, I agree, I would like to. And then I think we could actually do kind of a cool comparative video for this War of the Ring and Dune yeah. using the same or similar system and just talk about yeah, the some nuanced of the differences. differences yeah. and yeah, what works. But I enjoyed playing this. I'm looking forward to playing it this month. Yes. But we already played it. So, oh, and then my final thing is I, I will continue to play, like I said, Gift of the Nile. I'm done with the rest of them, but I'm also going to play Manila from Revolution Games. This is Mike Ranella's uh, Area Impulse System Volume 2. This is literally in the Philippines, and you're fighting. It's like street fighting, building to building and area to area. It just, I loved the first game in Stalingrad, Advance to the Volga. This one looks really good. The and artwork is so good. Yeah, I mean... And I don't the, know who they commissioned to do it. Well, I Deet, Mr. Dietz? Yeah, it, it looks really good. Like, this yeah, is... It just, just looks so good. There's the back, just for those... That Revolution see Games the back. typically does a good job from on that front. They're, they're a really good little this company. Is, it's this next is level. such an evocative piece of artwork. Yeah. From, like, the color shading and where the foci is. It's yeah. so good. Well, and they gave these... I've got cool dice. Look at those! What do you mean, look at these? They're cute. They're cute, but I've got cool you've, you've got, you've American got and Japanese dice. You have the dice. marine dice, Oh, right? yeah. Oh, I'm going to yeah. use all those. So, anyway, I'm going to play the heck out of this this month and uh, hopefully do some uh, video stuff. Yeah, I will done with it. finish playing Julius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, So, before we go to Kickstarter, let's talk about these three new big games that we got. Yeah, so... It's just, just for fun. Speaking of Noble Knight Games, who are our proud sponsor, and we're very grateful for them. Thank, thanks to them. We have been showing... <laughs> Shopping on their website. Yeah. So a couple of things. It's Look. very easy to get lost yeah. and lose your mind. It's very easy to yeah. lose your way. So yeah. the big bad boys that showed up this week are uh, Valley of Tears, which is Yom Kippur, and then Panzer's Last Stand, which Both is BCS Battle games. of Budapest. Yeah. So these are big three-inch boxes, both of them. This is a four mapper. This, this is, is a, a four mapper. mapper. This, this is like six sheets of counters. Does it say how many counters it is? I can't read it. 1,680 counters. Uh, of which about 400 of those are admin counters. This one has 1,400 Okay, counters. this one has more. <laughs> but this this is a very unique one because it's 1945 Battle of Budapest. Yeah. I, I, we I, I've never played, played a game. Played that. Yeah. And the, we played a couple scenarios in Combat Commander. Yeah. There, there were a couple of those in that era, but that's, I've never really that's played not a war the same game. As this no, though, it's right? not. That's, I, but I'm looking very much forward to that. Not only do I love the system, I'm interested in this topic. Yes. I, I really am. And, so. and Valley of Tears, I've played a number of Yom Kippur games already. And so I, 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 that's, that, I think that's helpful. You, when you know the overall tactical situation and strategic situation, then you're getting into, okay, I'm applying the rules and kind of doing it. His box is upside down. Yeah. Well, I've, I already did an unboxing of this, which is why it's like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we had the two, I think these are the two biggest BCS games. If you've not played yeah. BCS, maybe don't stop these. <laughs> well, we have Aracourt. Aracourt right is here. a really good place to start. Honestly, Baptism by Fire I, was an excellent yep. place you could start as well. Yep. So but BCS is a system that's well worth looking so, into. So, two, three, four. Raise and Chariots, five. Five. Six there's... is Last Blitz Creek, which was the first one. Did we, do we have that one? I don't think so. Okay, we gotta figure out how to get that one. It's a bulge game. It's addicting though. I don't <laughs> care. I love bulge games. That's fine, you can. I really enjoy them. But yeah, th yeah. these are two Very big, cool. big bad boys that showed really, up. Really excited. <laughs> these might be a while before they go onto yeah, the channel. I, I'm, gonna I'm gonna clip this. Or you wanna clip it? I'm gonna let you, I have an unboxed okay. it. So you do an unboxing, clip it. Okay, do I'll you. do that. I yep. unboxed this already, I'm gonna clip this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll show up on the channel eventually. Yeah, eventually. Maybe next year when we do our next round yeah, right. of but then we also got uh, The Enemy is at the Gates from Compass Games. A little bit of a box yeah. trouble there. So uh, this is, I, was this, is this the first game I've pre-ordered through Noble Knight? Maybe. I think so, yeah. Uh, we actually got on this one about a month or two ago and yes. it finally showed up. Yeah, they, so I think the way that it works out is that they put in an order to Compass for X amount of games mm -hmm. when they have them. And so the pre-order through Noble Light is limited. And so there are a lot of times where I'm like, oh, we should pre-order this. And it was like, we couldn't. 
Yeah. But this was yeah. one where we were able to jump on it and got it on a pre-order price through Noble Knight. It was great. Um, and it was packed with a couple other games, so we waited for those, and they all came yeah. together. It was really neat. But this game is also massive. We're, we're in the monster game territory at the moment yeah. with, with some of these. This is like a four-mapper... 1985 yeah, so Battle for Berlin. It's right the cent, you know, right in the middle of Germany and yeah, and but it's big so it's, game. it's the company scale system which we love, which is Compass Games' answer to um, GTS, which mm -hmm. is Grand Tactical System. We've played um, CSS Saipan. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple others, but the system is a, it's a it's a tactical system, right? You're yep. playing companies, platoons, support weapons, and then the command structures above that. Um, really detailed, but really enjoyable. A ton of counters. Yeah. Um, this game is massive. Yeah. But I've been I've been clipping it and going through it. The the scale and the pieces that you're playing with in this l look fascinating mm -hmm. because you have some conventional forces, but this is the Battle for Berlin when the Cold War kicks off. So like half of the forces in this are like the Polizei the Stasi, and, like, the West German police. Like, you have, like, coppers so, with riot So gear. not real combatants, just kind of put, pressed into service yeah. to do what they can do. And I'm so curious to play yeah. with that and see what that looks like. Well, there's even a horse counter. Right? I mean, there's a horse counter. Like, it's police horses. Yeah. I, wow. I, I, I think this has the potential to be something incredibly unique. What's that say? Rubble. <laughs> like, I couldn't see it's what a, that said. Okay. Yeah, so, some of the words yeah, are a little yeah, bit small yeah. on some of those yeah. counters. But I, I'm currently clipping it all and going through it. Yeah. Uh, it's a but, it's a big one. This but, is a, a brand new game, right? 2024, so yes. we will definitely play this one by the end of the year. Yes. It will be on our list and very excited. I feel yes. like we, we got some really big games in the last couple of weeks, and I think we've lost our mind. But A, a little bit. But yeah, we'll play them. Just we'll to, do it. It's been a fun time shopping around on Noble Night and like them yeah. having some real good games in the stock that I've yeah you know, we've been looking at and even well, some pre-orders. It's a good way to use them. As you know, I look at Noble Night a lot. You do as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a good place. And it's dangerous, right? You sign up for those email alerts when they get something in oh, stock yeah. and it's in stock and you're like, <laughs> yeah. So what did we buy recently? Byzantium, you bought me, which is a Euro game. Yes, and but then it, it's one I've always wanted because Martin Wallace, I enjoy his designs, and it's it's the Byzantine Empire. What were the other ones uh, we got? The, I don't remember. So it was it was Byzantium. It was the enemy is at the gates, and then it was Highway to the Kremlin Two. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, is yeah. a Napoleonics game, eighteen twelve. Yeah, yeah. uh, that's upstairs. I'm like punching and clicking yeah. at the moment. So anyway, we we've gone crazy with Noble Knight. So yes. They are our sponsors. We we appreciate everything they do. They're a great little yeah. company. I really enjoyed going to see them last year, and I look forward to probably not this year, maybe next year. Yeah, I, we'll yes. go up. But anyway, well, that, that, do we want to do we want to do Kickstarters? Right? Yeah, let's let's talk a little about Kickstarters. Go ahead and get my uh, yeah. You can go ahead. The and first talk about one I've one. Got, we're going to talk about is Ace of Aces. Um, and Ace of Aces is on Kickstarter. When this video is released, there's only a couple of days left. I think it finishes on the 9th of March. So, And it's done really well. It's done incredibly like $90, well. $90,000, I think. Yeah, so uh, a friend of ours is working on that, and he told me what their expectations were for that, and it has exceeded their wildest expectations by quite a lot. So I'm, I'm really like happy and proud yeah, yeah. Uh, for them, because it's cool to see success well, like and, that. And this is the Powerhouse series. Yeah, so... They have now committed, oh, yeah. I believe, to doing a Kickstarter campaign for... A couple of the other series. Yeah, I, I, I don't know the exact names, but they're going to yeah. do at least two more. Yeah. Um, so Ace of Aces, if you don't know, it is a book game uh, that originally came out, gosh, in like the at least the 70s or 80s. Uh, and I have a little book and I choose my maneuvers. Our father-in-law talks about this one. Yeah, with well, I used to own one of the old copies. Yeah. You're, it's a World War One dogfighting. And it's like this little matrix. And then that tells you which page to turn to. And based on what maneuver you chose and what I chose, you know, you then turn it, to this page, and it's literally that's what that's, I see. That's what you see, and so yeah. then from here you're choosing to bank a little bit to line up your guns and open fire and shoot them down. Yeah, and you're flipping from page to page based on this matrix. But they have, I wanted to show the artwork in this that they've got because it is 
significantly better oh, than yeah. the pencil line artwork in the originals. These are staggeringly good. Yeah. It is beautiful to sit and play with. This is a this is like a little ring bound prototype. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a nice full better, kind of yeah. like leatherette style book. But good gracious, if the artwork isn't such a massive upgrade. Oh yeah. So I, I I'm really, really looking forward to having these as the final product. I think they're much nicer than the originals, and that sure. might be blasphemy, but good gracious. And, but this is nice. Mr. B Games and yeah. it's Ace of Aces Powerhouse series. Yes. And it's like you said, it still has a couple days on Kickstarter, so if you're interested, get uh, get on that. Um, I also have an interview on the blog with the Peter Roos, who is the CEO. Ed Bryan is the developer, uh, and one other gentleman I can't remember the name, but simple read. But th they kind of talk about why they wanted to bring it yeah. bring it back. Obviously to make some money, but also to bring a classic and remake it. Yes, and it's done really well. Okay, uh, I think I found four Kickstarters that are currently active uh, this month. One is Iron Resolve Western Front from Janovich Games. It is a World War I game. It's already funded. It looks interesting. I, I was thinking about backing it, but I ultimately decided not to. We've got so many games. And yeah. yeah. I, I decided it probably wasn't for me. Uh, Might and Fury World War II was another one from War Chronicle. That's a self-published uh, company. It is a collaborative board game for two to six players. One of the things I really like about the the campaign is if you only play plays if you only play these games two player you buy the two player version. Oh, I, you, I have I had, I didn't yep, see that part. Of it. I looked. I read the thing. Get up to four players. I went ahead. I actually backed this, and I did the six player because this is something I would like to take to a convention, two to three hour game, and it it, it will be fun. But it can play need. down to two players. I believe so. When you buy up to two to six, you can play two players only. But you, you have all that option. Okay, okay. So if you never are going to get to four and five, six players, you can spend less money and get and just, just the two-player. Two. Okay, which I think is kind of unique. But you can downscale and, the big yep. one if you want to. Okay, yeah. so that's... Kind of unique and, and novel. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, the next one that I found, let me scroll down. This was in my War Game Watch, by the way, that today this month hasn't done that well. Um, Storm of Steel, JU87 Stuka, Eastern Front from Compass Games. This is Joe Fernandez, one of these narrative-style... Uh, Air War Games, Stuka Leader. There's JU-87 Stuka Ace and Stuka Leader, and now there's Storm of Steel. So that these come in threes, right? They, yeah. they just end up. But that one still is on uh, Kickstarter. I think it actually finishes up on March the 6th. So you're, you're going to have to get on that one pretty quick. And then the other one I found that isn't going to release this month, month but it will in the next couple of months, is Operation Barkley from Salt and Pepper Games, designed by Maurice Suckling. So it literally is intelligence and counterintelligence in World War II in the Mediterranean theater. So the Abware versus the Allies, it looks really unique and interesting, kind of a card-driven style game, uh, very much interested in those. So those are the Kickstarters that I'm aware of, plus the uh, yeah. Ace of Aces. So there's a lot there. Yes. Uh, so that was everything that's kind of on Kickstarter. I'm sure there's more, but that's, that's yeah, all yeah, on Kickstarter yeah. that we're aware of. Uh, but now we'll have a word from our sponsor, Noble Knight Games. Uh, so uh, thanks to Noble Knight Games for sponsoring us. We're very grateful for their support. Uh, they help keep the lights on here and to help keep us going. And uh, they provide a really good service, both for us and for, I think, a lot of other war yeah. gamers out there. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a great partnership. And, you know, they, we spend a lot of money with Yeah, we do. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. <laughs> and, like, I have, uh, I think I have uh, Devil's Cauldron on pre-order with <laughs> Sure, <laughs> which is a huge. Yeah, huge I wanted game. to play an official GTS, and yeah. I kind of wanted to play that one because Arnhem's great, and if yeah. I, I didn't want to buy the old version, so I'm like, I'll wait for the new one. I can wait. Well, and while we don't have it on Noble Knight Games, we also have GTS Utah, Utah. Beach <laughs> on pre-order from MMP, along with. Are we gonna be monster war gamers? I think so. Maybe. 
We need I, to grow up. I love up, the idea of them. And I maybe do. There, and now that we have the table, maybe it, there it, is a time where it's like, yeah, we we set up one of these and play it for like a whole month. That would be awesome. We're gonna have to really change what we do though at the blog, and, and I'm okay with that. Yet, I, I think we it's have fine. two months of videos, and if we did it, no one would notice. You're right. That. I, I, no, you're right. Okay. You're right. I'm thinking about it. And, and we still have Arden 44 set up right here. I've got Arden 44 here. I got Great Battles of Julius Caesar under there. And we so, could even set someone else. But we, we easily could. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm. One day. One There's day. The, yeah, definitely something to consider. One day, one day. Yeah. I so anyway, thanks, Noble Knight. Yes. You guys all know the merits of Noble Knight. So, so on to the kind of topic of today. Um, these topics are suggested by our patrons every month. I put up a little post, and then people who are at the $5 Patreon level get to suggest topics that we choose, and I pick one of them, typically. And yep. today, oh, I what? forgot who suggested it. Here, let me look it up. Let me give credit where credit is due. It was from a gentleman by the name of... None of those people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're idiots. Uh, I mean, you would think that we're not professionals or something. Yeah. Am I a moron? Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, uh, how am I missing this? I don't know. I feel okay. like... Okay. I feel like it was a guy called Paul, but I'm being an idiot and I don't know. Well, now the guy called Paul is probably going to just say, forget yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, It was a guy... No. It was a guy called Pavel. Pavel, Thanks. not Paul. Thanks, Pavel. Pavel. I can't read. It's very late. Okay. And I've eaten a lot of chicken wings today. Yeah. It is like, it's 11 o'clock now, <laughs> so. So, today we're going to talk about kind of small format war games. Mm -hmm. And so, I, indeed, a few months ago we did a game on like big monster war games. Uh, and so this is kind of like the, the a companion to that. Because sometimes... You just want to play a little game. Sometimes you want to slot that into like a lunch break, or you want to just, you don't have very much physical space because you might be on the road, or you yeah. want a palate cleanser after one of these monster games. And all the games we're going to talk about will fill kind of one of those functions. Um, even something like Ace of Aces, that's not out yet, but I think that's one of those games where yeah. it is literally a book, and you have a book. That is, I can tuck that in my little suitcase mm -hmm. or in my backpack, and it, and it's just this, right? So that that's the kind of thing that we're going to talk about today. Well, and and you know they're small in scale, small in size, but they're not small in gameplay. I, I not think necessarily. Al almost every one of these games we're going to talk about. We've played all of them, and they're really good games. Yeah. They're not only interesting and engaging, but there's some really great mechanics and design elements here that make these games really fun yes. and really interesting. And most of these games, I think you can buy them for 20 to $30. Yeah, m most of them are very reasonably priced. Go on which, Amazon which or I go appreciate. on, you know, so... Where do you want to start? Let's start with the P PSC games ones. Okay. Because I, I think these are something that had a, were, were quite famous, especially Blitzkrieg. Yeah. So we got Paolo Mori's, uh, there is a name for these, and I can't remember. It's like there's a little name for the micro series. <laughs> the little game series? <laughs> yeah, so these are from a company called PSC Games out of England. We have Caesar. Plastic have, Soldier Company. Yes, uh, and Pl Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg was kind of the first one. It kind of made a big splash. Indeed, there's like a dice tower seal of excellence on it. That's how kind of big that made it. Very abstract game about World War II where you're like moving these tracks that represent the whole theaters. But it's this really tight 20 minute little game back and forth. It's really clever. It's very clean. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really fun. Cool. Very fun little game. It's abstract. Very. So, so I, I wanted to make sure we show you the board because it's not like a war a war game that you're going to see very, and that's the Nippon side, I think, right? You have Godzilla on that side. But, you know, it, it's there's a bunch of boxes and they represent the different theaters, but it's a very unique and interesting game. Very engaging, very fun, and very well produced. Yes. Um, and then we also got Caesar, 
similarly very well produced. This yeah. is a, this is kind of an ancient Rome game. You have this really abstract Mediterranean that you've got going on. Um, this one is much more of an abstract game. Um, mm -hmm. This is about placing pieces to, you know, get the borders of areas to control that area, and you're going to score points by doing that. Um, this one, I felt like it's this bit more of this kind of tug of war on these tracks. But it's very it's abstract. Like, yeah, but then this is like, this is an abstract. Sure. I, I felt. Uh, it's much less of a war game, mm -hmm. um, but I really, really, really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> very cool, very different style so, from the kind of game. So I would say out of the two, frankly, I enjoyed Caesar. I think I did too. Better. I, I did enjoy Blitzkrieg. I really did. This one I just... Enjoyed that much. Yeah, more. this engaged a different part of my brain that I really yeah. liked. Uh, very, very fun. So those are... Uh, well, and they're, you know, small, portable. We actually have Dogfight over there, but yes. that's not that's not made by Paolo Mori. That's no, Carlos but Rossi, but it's the same, same series. Same company in the same line. I think that one's like a five-minute game. Uh, it can be a two-minute game, yeah. too, yeah. I've these are more like 20, 20 to 30-minute games. Yes, yeah, these two have a bit more meat than Dogfight. Yeah. But I, I really enjoy these, and... I'm glad that we've yeah, those, played that, them that again. It's like these fun the little small format games that you just you tuck in. Here's 20 minutes. Yep. Very little rules up to. But you feel like you walked away and you had a stake. Yeah. Right. You you feel f fulfilled. Speaking of, let's have a quick discussion about some of these states of siege games. And I didn't bring any of my states of siege. So, <sighs> so I'm not sure why. States of siege um, is an interesting one. Um, I'm specifically using these old victory point games because they're kind of small. pizza boxes because they are smaller. Worthington Games uh, is going through and like reproducing them in deluxe versions where the boxes are bigger, the boards are bigger, the pieces are a bit bigger. So they, they maybe don't fit into that as much. Um, and I think Blue Panther or um, White Dog Games yeah. has a lot of States of Siege yeah, they, style games. The as ones well. that I talked about, Global War and Gift of the Nile, are States of Siege but, series but games. But those are like start to get into like big three hour games. Oh, yeah, very yeah. big. Something like Zulu's on the Ramparts, however, you can play this in like 45 minutes. Yeah, and these I think are more like 60 to 90 minutes. They can be over very, very quickly. Yes. I, I have had my butt kicked more so by Habsburg Eclipse than Ottoman Sunset. But these, these kind of older format games, like, this is one quarter of the board. Yeah. So it's not very big footprint size. It all tucks away into this little game, which I'm going to have to put away later. Because it's... Uh, <laughs> what fit, are you, a, a barbarian? Fitting them back into these tiny pizza it's, boxes it's, it's is a, a nightmare. But, you know, there's, a, there's and, an element of nostalgia and, to And it. I have, in the same format, I have Mound Builders. Yep. And I love that game. It absolutely is one of my favorite States of Seed series games of all time. Yeah. I, so. I, th these are great. And if you can find these old little versions, that you know, they're neat. And what I would say about States of Seed series games, solo games, right? Yes. Those are not two-player games. But it's you have a central point, and typically there's four or five tracks converging on that. And your whole goal is to survive. You're trying to beat all the armies back mill resources, do things, and survive. And and they play in 45 minutes to an hour. They're very fun and interesting. And you know what? When you get your butt kicked, you just set them up again and you go at it. Yeah. Now, I have the two new versions of those games, Habsburg Eclipse and Ottoman Sunset from Tabletop Tycoon, still under the Victory Point Games banner. They are very much blinged out, very high-quality games, except the cards are terribly miniaturized. And I'm not sure why that they're just so hard to read. Because there's a lot of text on and them. And they're just so small. Those games are fantastic. I have loved those. We have I have playthroughs and reviews coming up on those, but those are great games. You can carry them anywhere, take them with you, and, and they're just a yeah. blast. The, I think these old versions are that extra little bit more portable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you could just smaller you boxes. can make those work. Yep. Okay. So, so let's talk about some CDGs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because we have a, a few here. Uh, so CDG, if you don't know, is a card-driven game. Yep. And I'm trying to. So let's get these three. Yeah. Because there's these are all quite different, although uh, these two are from a similar type of family. So card-driven games are, are often, you know, these kind of big, 
three plus hour games mm -hmm. and they come in these ah! big GMT boxes and they get tons of decks of cards in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas we've got some of these games here that we'll talk about and design efforts have been specifically made to really like make them more compact, to tighten down the time and mm -hmm. the amount of like space and resources needed for them. Yeah. I think 13 Days was one of the first ones in, in this kind of style. Yeah. Where people will say, oh, this is like Twilight Struggle. Mm -hmm. Light, mini. Mini. Yep. Uh, and they partly say that just because it's a Cold War theme. This is a game about the Cuban Missile Crisis. But you're going to play like three rounds, three hands of cards, mm -hmm. and they're smaller hands of cards, rather than like the, I think it's eight or nine rounds of cards in the full Twilight Struggle. The map is a little bit smaller, but it's still this kind of area control influence style game just looks a bit different. Mm -hmm. This is a game that you're gonna play and it's gonna take you 45 minutes, but it has enough meat on the bones where it feels as if you've mm -hmm. played something like Twi Twilight Struggle for 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so this was one of those, the first ones. This is from Ultra Pro. I love this game. I do love the theme, and it, yeah. and, it, and it really works with what it was trying to do. Well, and, and I played that game with my wife uh, probably half a dozen times, and she, she enjoyed it. Yeah. She really enjoyed it. So now, that, that spawned Fort, yes. Fort Sumter. Similar style. The Final Crisis is really the, the comparison to that game. This is an ACW game. And then this begat Red Flag Over Paris. Yes. Although... Really very different games. Yeah, the, the similarity in this is that you have those different, uh, the different dimensions, and you're trying to influence those dimensions, and, and uh, you know, if you have the key spaces, you get the cool extra bonuses. But Red Flag Over Paris is, I think, very different from Fort Sumter. Uh, very different, and, and I think a, a little bit more of an advanced system. Agreed. It, it really takes this and it kind of grows up. Yep. And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mark Herman designed Fort Sumter. It's a fantastic game. This one just kind of takes it in a, in a different direction. Yeah, th th there's a lot more... Um, I think in this one, they put a, a lot more restrictions on you in different areas. Yep. And so you have to be a bit more careful and really yeah. ponder and consider what you want And this one is. feels more like a war game, meaning you're doing some more battles. Yeah, Th I, I agree. There's barricades and it's just a little more combat oriented than this one. This one really is about the, it's a, it's the build. It's game. Yeah, right? and it's about the build up to the firing of the guns at Fort Sumter that kicked off the American Civil War. So very different focus, but both very good. They're portable games. Each of these play in 40 to 45 minutes, and I've played this one with my wife probably 30 times, and that that says a lot, because what do our wives love? Uh, phase 10 and dominoes. That's what they play, and there's nothing wrong with that. We love our women dearly. <laughs> but to be able to convince yep. them to play something that's and to historical. play it 30 times is insane, and then that one five times, so... That should tell you a lot about these games, and I, I think they're really excellent games. I would love to see them design a couple more uh, in this series, and I'm not sure. I'm just not sure that there's any others that are being designed. But I, hope I don't that, know. I, I imagine there probably is, but I yeah. don't know. But anyway, really like that. Fred Serval, Mark Herman, really nice mini card driven games. So then we're going to kind of parlay that into 1979 Revolution in Iran. And this is from a company called the Dietz Foundation, which is a non-profit, and it's designed by a uh, friend, uh, friend of ours, Dan Bullock. And that, that guy's a, he's a good designer. He yes. really is. So this one, quite divergently from 13 Days and Fort Sumter and Red Flag Over Paris, this is a like full-size CDG in a very small package. And it plays in about three hours, I think, right? Yeah, it's, it's anywhere from 90 to 120 minutes. Yep. So two two hours. Well, yeah, I think your first game might be close to three yeah. hours if it goes the whole time because just a lot to consider. Um, you know, full size rule book in it with mm -hmm. lots of stuff in there, uh, but it is this kind of slim portable yep. package. But when you get it out, it is there's a, a lot. Of it game is a there. full blown game in here. Yeah, like th it's this ain't no lunchtime game. No, uh, and so. Really nice production too. Yeah, I wanted to give an example of where you've got this compact box in size. 
Uh, and the map itself isn't huge, but it's got a number of spaces on it. But yep. The game itself is like a full, meaty game. They didn't like yep. shave it down to make it 45 minutes, right? No. Like this is huge game in a small box. I, I actually really loved this game. It was really good. There were some really cool elements to it. Um, one of my favorite parts was that CIA intervention yeah, concept. That, 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 that outside uh, US influence, yeah. if you get caught, <laughs> it's bad. It's just very unique and interesting and it really, really worked very, very well. I think this was our first Dietz Foundation game. Yeah. Now, since we've played Free at Last and that was not no. one of my favorites. Um, but this is. But this one definitely is very, really, very, really good. very good. And I like that it's portable. I, I, I enjoy the portability of, yes. of that game. Uh, let's go ahead and look at, let's look at these. Because these are also kind of card driven. Oh, yeah. Right? Watergate is definitely another little CDG. Yeah. So, As is the hunt. Yeah. Watergate from Capstone Games. This is a, not really, a, not a war game. This is a game that's about Nixon trying to cover up the Watergate scandal. And yep. the other player is trying to expose like him. The press, yeah, trying to expose him. So. You're playing this back and forth on, you know, on, on a couple of little tracks, but you're also trying to win uh, and uncover clues yep. to make these connections to get them. Mm -hmm. Or you're trying to like stamp those out and, and yeah, I'll, I'll send them the off way the path. Looks there in the back. That, I, I thought this was a really cool visual way of connecting the dots on these suspects. I, I, I just thought this game was really fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a Matthias Kramer design. He, he is very, very good. Really, really nice guy as well. Yeah. Really fun. And this is that one game that we learned uh, at our first ever Buckeye mm -hmm. Game Fest, and it was personally taught to us by Rodney, Rodney Smith. Smith. Yep. And that's one of my favorite gaming memories. That we had oh, a, yeah. Had our own little personal episode of well, Watch It Played. Such a nice guy. And I, it's kind of funny, but since, not because of us or partially probably because of this game, he has really gone into a historical game lean. Well, he's gone back into it. Uh, it's yeah. interesting to talk because I think. You're right. <coughs> before he was ever doing this stuff, I think he liked. War gaming Got it. and historical games, and so, but he's seeing, a sellout. Seeing him dive, he back sold into out, it. <laughs> sold out, left what's then, been. I'm just kidding. Then euros. Yeah, but yeah, now yeah. he's back into a lot of those well, coin series, levy and campaign. Levy and campaign. It's really cool. I love to watch him talk about that stuff because I, I actually feel his excitement level the way you and I felt that excitement yes. level in 2016, 2017, 2018 as we were building up. And it's infectious, right? It is. I think he's a really good communicator of he's why a, he likes things. He's and, a great guy. And, and I appreciate that. So Watergate, yep. really good. Yeah, Watergate is, is a fantastic game. Uh, the Hunt, also a Matthias Kramer design. Yes. Ingen Kunter, who is now his spouse, they, they were married, I, I don't remember when, but in the last year, yes, I think, more, more, yeah. give or take. Yeah, I think it was the last. This is a very cool game because it's a hidden movement game. One side plays the Graf Spee and the Germans as they're trying to kind of scour that South Atlantic. Intercept uh, shipping and yeah. stuff. And, and then the other players, the Royal Navy, trying to go out and hunt them down because they're destroying their shipping. Very unique mechanics, very cool use of the card-driven game mechanic in a very tiny box. Plays in about 45 minutes. We had a blast with this one. Salt and Pepper Games. Yep, yep. I mean, what a what a great cover. What a striking well, cover. Well, and, and the art, not only on the cover, but the art on the cards is literally just fantastic. I'm trying to remember who the... Is it Albert Montes? Um, I'm kind of surprised it doesn't say on there. Okay, it doesn't. But it's it's well, just a fun game. Oh, it's so but good. But it, it, it's, it, it's just... Well, and I also like this game that it... It, it can end in a fairly big conflagration, yes. right? If the certain cards get played and line up, you're going to end up in a battle at the river plate, yep. right? And that's kind of how the end of the Graf Spey come about in history, but it can happen in the game, and it really changes the way the game goes. So that first half of the game, it's like that hide-and-seek, hunt-and-find, and then if you find them... 
you go to that battle, and it's just a totally different game. It's just so unique the, and interesting. The, I think the Battle of River Plate is one of my favorite things to like sure. watch. Sure. Because it's not... It was like barely even a real battle. They had like some naval engagements out in the Atlantic. Sure. And then it was all bluffing, and they scuppered themselves. Yeah. Because they didn't want... And then, but it was like... It was three, it was like, it was like three little cruisers that couldn't have handled the the pocket battleship, and uh, yeah, and they had bluffed the Germans into destroying their own ship. I think yeah. it was just such a cool story. Yeah. One of my favorite parts about this game, and I really really enjoyed this, is the uh, the concept of the Graf Spey needing to refuel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you've got that. I can't remember what the name of that ship was, but it's it's historically named. Yeah, I and don't it's kind of floating around, and and as the U.S. or the Royal Navy. You're like, okay, he's got to be somewhere near that. So you're kind of hunting it. And then the other really good part about the game was the little plane. It's a disc, yeah. right? On the Graf Spey that you can kind of send out and do some reconnaissance. It's just so cool how it all works It's, it's together. a really fun little game. I, I had a great time with that. That's a 2023 game. Um we played it in 2022 when yeah, it was going on Kickstarter, but really good game. And then this game, um, this IP has struggled. So Robotech Reconstruction from SMG. But but the Robotech, uh, great cartoon in the 80s. I loved it. People my age, Gen Xers, loved it. it. It's just struggled over the years to find its niche and find a good game. Yeah. This game came out a year ago, year and a half ago. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. It is a coin series-like game, only in the regard of the asymmetry and four totally different factions that all win and work in a totally different way. Yeah, and, and you have a menu of asymmetric actions yeah. and stuff. Other than that, the comparisons really aren't the same but the game is unique. It's fascinating. We played this with our brother-in-law and father-in-law, and they actually enjoyed it. I, and I enjoyed this game yes. quite a bit. Now, the the final product is very much smaller. Okay. The prototype was double this size. Yeah, if you go back and if you watch our preview video for Robotech Reconstruction, yeah. you will see a box that is huge. this big. Huge. And the board was so big and had a lot yep. of stuff in it. And when you sh when this came in the mail and you showed me a picture, it was this You're same like, front cover, yeah. and it was just that, and it was on a very dark background, and so I could not tell that the scale was different. Yeah. And then when you brought it to my house, and it's it was tiny. this little yeah, piddly yeah, yeah. thing, yeah. I was like, what? Well, it's not it's not really piddly. The components are really good, but it's just small. I like it. It's just so small. I was, I was like, what kind of wizardry have yeah. they used <laughs> to put that game into this yeah. box? But very interesting. They did it. But yeah, a fun game. Yep, very, very good. Uh, Strange Machine Games. Yep. You said SMG. Strange machi Machine Games, not Submachine Gun. I always think of SMG, Submachine Gun. Well, they have an SMG next to it. They right? do, right there, right there. Um, but th those three little cool games are just so unique and so interesting. Um, let's talk about these next. Sure. We, we've actually got about 10 more, yeah. right? Well, yeah, we'll, I, we'll, I feel we'll try like. and blitz through some of these. Oh, yeah. These Draco were ideas. So good. Um, Tetrakia was really good. I really yeah. liked Tetrakia. And, and this is a cooperative game. Yeah. So you are playing as one Roman governor and you're trying to work together as you fight off the barbarian advances. This is like micro pandemic Roman. Ag agreed. And, and it was really fun. Very fun. Um, the designer of this, Miguel Marquez, is now working on the second game in the series. It's called Hispania. And it uses some of the same stuff, but it's not the same. They're going to add elements to it. But look, look at that little box. It's just so cute. And it plays up to four players. Yeah, f four players. Um, yeah, and from Draco Ideas. Really great little game. We absolutely love this. Then we got, uh, oh, that was upside down. Yeah, was we got 1212 Las Navas de Tolosa. This is. Uh, Ooh, that was, that was pretty good. Ooh. Los Navas de Tolosa. De Tolosa. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, it probably is that. Because it's offended. actually Spanish. That probably offended half of our no. audience. It's because it's Spanish, not Mexican. Yeah, you got to roll your tongue. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so it's Las Navas de Tolosa. There you go. I don't know if that's... Yeah, anyway. that, that, that's going too far. I don't know if it is. All right, we need to move on. So anyway, <laughs> this is um, also like quite an abstract two-player yeah. tactical game where it's all about rows and columns. Mm -hmm. 
um, brutal game. Yeah. It's it, a lot of fighting, a lot of combat, and it's you trying to basically take the opponent's uh, that camp, and then I'm trying to defend it. Uh, fun and, little game, that's for and sure. And I do think um, the faction that I played is the power faction, and the yes. faction you played has to really be cagey and dodgy and... And it just didn't work, right? I, yeah. I, I think literally, I was the Muslim faction. Yes. The Christians. And it, it just, I think it was a, a blitz. And it, and it had but a, it was a very fun, fun game. The card system in this was so very unique. cool. There are full reviews for both of these. Yeah. You should definitely check but them out. Both of these are really small games. I, I just think they're really, they're yeah. so cute. They're, very, they're just so cute. Tetranarchia was so good, considering yeah. it's this little box. Really I enjoyed really that. that. Um, I Look, have... Uh, yeah, go ahead. I, so I have Field of the Cloth of Gold. Uh, this looks like it's a big box, but let me show you the map. This is the map. Uh, this is a... This is the pe wooden pieces, and these are the... Like, the game is two pages of rules. This is a very abstract... Oh, it's not really a war game. Yeah. Um, I've is, not played this, this yet. This is a gift-giving so. game, and it's how magnanimously you can give gifts to others whilst receiving more gifts than you gave. <laughs> it's really, really good. Um, uh, I have played this like 35 on times the on Rally the Troops. Uh, but the game I, keep, is, I keep getting expected to be asked to play it when yep. we're over here. And you just never do. It's just a, it's you a, and Kenneth, I think, play the game yeah, all the time. Me and Kenneth, right? and then uh, and then me and Cullen play it now okay. as well because he and I nice. just the, it's just a neat little game, and it comes in one of the standard Hollandspiel boxes. But the game itself it's is very very tiny, very small. Well, and I would say all of Hollandspiel's boxes are that size. Yeah, they have, they have only have a couple that are any bigger. But, but many of them have a lot more components, bigger. Yeah, yeah you could unfold a twenty-two by thirty-four out of one yeah. of those boxes. But sometimes. they're still smaller games, and probably should have been included in the in the list. But, but the, I picked this one because this was like the it. smallest. Yeah. It wasn't just like table balance where it's some kind. All right, let's let's go to Shakos. These are both by Shakos. Uh, both really cool. Very, very cool Saladin games. is really, really good. Yep. Um, this, is a, this is one of those games where it's like, here's my static units, and it's rolling formation on formation, removing yep. sticks. Uh, I think something like Freeman's Farm is a similar type of game if you've played yep. that. And uh, there's actually two different battles in this box. Yes. So it's not just one battle, it's two different. Which is, which is nice. Yeah, and this is... I really liked this. Oh, it's a great little game. Especially because both of those battles were very different. Yep. And the artwork on the cards... is beautiful. I really, really like the style that they've gone yep. with on here. It's just the, lovely to play The with. really... The best part about this game... The custom dice are also really, really good. Um, the best part about this game is the way that your activations kind of dwindle over time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's really about trying to outlast the other person by conserving your actions at the right time. It's just so unique and interesting. I, I really love this game. Yeah. Um, but Shakos out of France. And then the other game they have is this Border States. Yeah, Border States is a very abstract game mm -hmm. about um, five of the border states during the American Civil War. Missouri, Kentucky, West Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware. And you are like, you're committing your different leaders to Very one cool. of three different battles. Yep. And the outcome of those battles will affect, you know, one will affect this particular tr state, this one will affect this particular state. And you're trying to move that state towards you mm -hmm. and then off that track so that you end up controlling it. And you're trying to get three of the five, basically. Yep. Uh, but so it's, a, it's, it's very abstract, lots of. Committing guys and moving tracks around. But it's a very fun game. You know what this game reminds me of? Hmm. Uh, it's called Lenin's Legacy from GMT Games. I think Death of Lenin is yeah. conceptually very similar. Yeah, I could see that. it's not the same, but it's this... You've got this multiple layers of tugs of war mm -hmm. and trying to get the right outcomes for you to win this stuff. Yep. How it plays out is different, but I found that I felt that those two games were... Shared some DNA of, of how okay. I think about them. Yeah, I could I could see that. I, I just like both of these games are cute little games that really they're they're good games. Yeah. I mean, it, it, uh, I, I've got a couple other really. Do you have any other games? There? I do. I do. Well, yep. Go ahead. Go. So well, let's, like let's go for the really little games. Okay, these I'm, are really really little. 
right? And these are all great little games. This is, I've not played Mortal Kombat yeah, solo one, right? I, th yeah, this is a solitaire game. It was from Stratamax Games, and you can get this, I think, on the Game Crafter. I want to say this was... And I'm going to say the price, and you're going to go, what? It was like $39, but it's a small publisher, right? But yeah, it's, it's, nothing it's, but cards. All you have is cards. You have 120 cards, probably? Yep, and you have like, uh, it's like six pages of rules. But it's a solitaire, airborne game in Normandy. And you're literally trying to build up your deck by recruiting airborne troops and different and then fighting through different objectives. Very fun, very challenging. The game can be over in 10 minutes or it'll play for about an hour. And I did a video review on this. I just love that, I mean, you could put this in your shirt pocket and play this in well, a that hotel. That many cards will stop a bullet too. Well, yeah, true. That's not legal advice or medical advice. It won't do that. There you go. But it's a, <laughs> it's a good little game. I Solitaire, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, but Airborne Commander, Aaron Louster is the designer, and you can get it from Game Crafter. But it's Stratamax Games who... But look it up. It, it, it's a great little game. So what are these other ones? You, I'm done talking. So talk. we have 13 Minutes, which is the sister a, game to 13 game. Days. So 13 Days takes about an hour to play. 13 Minutes takes, takes like 13 minutes, minutes to yep. play. Uh, it is literally... This many cards <laughs> and this many cubes. Yeah. But it's really a, a good little game. It's fun. Yes. Right? It doesn't have a traditional board. You just use the cards and you put your tokens on. It's just really fun. Yeah, so this really is, it is 13 days and they removed the board and yep. they like st yep. stripped down the concepts. And so it's all printed on these little cards of what you do. It plays in 13 minutes, it's, literally. Yeah. I think we've played that one a lot more than we've played this one, yes. but this is still a fun... It's almost a novelty. Yeah, it, and it's cute, right? It's it's a tiny little box. That box is like five times bigger than it needs to be. Yeah, you're, you're, you're correct. Uh, the, the Grizzled. I We have played The Grizzled dozens of times. Box is? Well, they Matt had the expansion. Did he have the deluxe box? He had, had the had big, the huge... I didn't know it was this small. Yeah, I, I actually just bought this like six months ago. Okay. I was on Amazon and they had a I sale. I freaking love this game. Oh, I, I've never played this game and not enjoyed it. But I've we've never won it. And no. never really even come close. And that's okay. Yeah, it's like, but it's, it's like, oh, I, we're kind of close. But to get that last bit, you're it, so far away. Yeah, it... But it, I, I love, I love the theme of this game. Yeah, right. So you're, it's World War One. You're some so French cute. dudes so in a cute. trench, and you've been around for a while. A card game, and it is about not dying. Yep. And it says, "Can friendship be stronger than war?" And you're, I, you're it's just the whole like, thing. You're helping each other. It's cooperative. Yeah, and, and like some of the stuff is like. You make someone a coffee, yep, and it boosts and, them morale. And you give a speech you that tell encourages a story, people. Yeah. Yep. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to match your cards with terrains that are out there to kind of defeat those, and ultimately try to cause the end, the armistice, by having the dove card. Come yeah, out. and, and, and you're just so hard. you're trying to last long enough. Yep. All the the literal shells and bullets that are yep. thrown at you on the cards. Can you? you know, help each other out to yep. to fend off all that before you just collapse. I, I'm going to be honest, this is one of my favorite games of all time because it's just so fun. It it's is just so fun. A very unique art style as well. Yep, it is. And it's, yeah, again, we played this with people who are not war gamers yep. and it has staying power with that group as yep. well. We've probably played this 30 times and like I said, never even come close to no. winning. Not even close. Uh, I've also got uh, La Resistance from Flying Pig Games. This is, again, a very small format game on the French Resistance. Yeah, that's a cloud. It's not okay, a Okay, that's, that's odd. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since we've played this. Yeah, so this... But it's a fun game. Very yeah, fun. it is. And Unique. it can play up to six people, I think it was. We played this with our wives. Yeah, we Four also played it with uh, Mark Holt-Walker and did Herm Lutman. Herm Lutman, Lutman yep. as well. Yep. Uh, so this is a game where like you play as different um, cells in uh -huh. the in the French Resistance yep. with uh, slightly different uh, political aims. Sure. Uh, and your goal 
is to be the the resistant cell at the end of the war. Um, and so you're you're trying to go out on missions, defeat the Germans. We're all trying to defeat the Germans. Yeah. You're trying to be the last one left after the Germans are defeated. And uh, it's a it's a dice masher. Look at these cool custom dice with the. Yeah, those, those, those are great, and that's that's on the one side, which yeah. is very French. Yeah, and you, you've got the German Iron Cross there. Such a great little but, game. Uh, but yeah, this is a game of, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Or yeah. it's a game of I rolled incredibly well, yep. stand up cheering moments yep. in this little box that's about overcoming the, yeah. this, the stiffest of resistance. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And, and like I said, we played this with Kelly and Paisley. Yep. And I, it's so funny because Kelly just doesn't want to listen to rules. No, she's, right? if she, it, she just wants to roll a dice and move on. But I'm like, dude, just, you got to listen. And she ended up winning. No, Paisley won. Paisley won. But it's just like, it, they both destroyed us. But you, but you, they win, destroyed us. You win by not dying first. Well, like sure. that's, we lost. And she won because we lost. Well, and I think it was because they basically ganged up on us. And, well, and right? Then, yeah, and you're also like, I'm trying, I'm trying to like do the game and like push my luck. And you know, backseat yeah. driver over here is like, oh, you crashed. <laughs> I survived. <laughs> yeah. Great. Anyway, uh, well, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. So these these are both two games that uh, are a bit. Again, we go back up to a little bit more meaty. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still small. Yeah, still small, small and, and not overly long. Yep. Uh, the King is Dead is an area control game. Uh, this is uh, a... That's a fun game. Gosh, it is. And, and it's funny because I've seen a lot of people say, I hate this game. And I, I get why they hate it. But it's so interesting. You, yeah. me, and Brum played this and we had a total blast. And I would never not play it for nope, a player. I, I, this is a three-player game. Yeah. And it is, is this only three players? No, you can play it with two, but or you I, can play it with four, but you want to play yeah, it with three. Yeah. It is a wildly interesting game. This is um, extremely, gosh, what's, what's the right phrase? Like, this is extremely calculated. Well, it's about how you play your cards and when you there's, play them. There's absolutely, like, zero luck in this game. Yeah. This is about planning and execution. And really playing off of the other players as well. And and, and, and if you can Just play so your cards good. well and decently predict what they're going to do, yep. you, you can, can win. you will outplay people. I, the, that's the board, right? Yeah, it's I like mean, it's, it's, what, it's like seven regions, eight regions. Yeah, two, four, six, eight. Just so fun. A few little pieces, and, and it just deteriorates just so as as you spend pieces and you collect them there's fewer on the board and it yeah it's just a wonderful little game yeah i do i like you said i understand why it's uh, not for everyone a lot of people have said they really don't like the game but good gracious is this this yeah. is a really great uh, it game. is uh, the exercise of what you're doing is fascinating yep and, and that pierre sylvester guy we've played several of his games you remember um let them eat cake Yep, I do. Game? I do remember that. Not a war game in any way, shape, or form, but fun. But it's a fun and interesting game. We played that with my son, and he was at that time like nine or yeah. ten, and he he did well and enjoyed it, and we had a good time. Yeah. But Pierre Sylvester is a really good designer, and that that's one of his finest. Uh, Iron Blood, Snow and Mud. We played this at Christmas and did a full review on this. I did a uh, first impressions uh, written post on it. It's just a fast playing, almost chess like. Yeah. Again, it's this is it's the way that you have to think about your moves in this game because your moves kind of play off of each other. Yeah. You have to create a train of units to get your back units through to the front, and yeah. if you ever have a break, then you you're gonna have to move those one, and it's just gonna take time. You're like snaking them around. Yep. To like, and then leapfrogging them, and then snaking through those ones. Very unique. And then there's the war game aspect of it as well. Yep. 60 to 90 minutes, a really interesting two player East Front Hex Encounter war game. And, and there's a lot of gaminess to it. it. There's a lot of dice rolling. Yeah. And the dice, I think they have ones, twos, and threes on them. Yeah. And you usually roll like three or four of them. Um, the, the, my favorite part about this game. And the more I've thought about it, I actually liked it more and more. But Stalin has to try to survive. 
you yawned and now I'm yawning. Yep. Sorry. Um, but if you get him surrounded, he can try to make one roll to, to kind of get out of there. And it's just, it's, it's a fun, unique little aspect. Yeah. And it just makes, once again, makes it somewhat of a game. And I like that. This is not a hardcore war game. This is an abstracted, chess-like, very cool, very well produced. The, the map is gorgeous. I really had a good time with this one. You know who would like this game? This is from Phalanx. David Thompson. No, I think he would. I think he said he did like it. I think okay. he played it. But I, I enjoyed it. I, I thought this was a good one. So, yeah. really had a good time with it and I'm very glad. Well, and I, that and I we also think it. it's cool cuz a lot of Phalanx games are very big and yes. very bombastic with their production and that's in a, in a very small. way, but this is a real change from them and that was yep. it was neat to see that. Uh, the, 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 speaking of David Thompson, yes. you, you just mentioned David Thompson. This is a game uh, by David Thompson, Roger Tankersley and Trevor Benjamin. This is called Resist and it is about the uh, Franco regime and the resistance to that Franco regime in 1940s. Is, yeah, it's post World War II. It's post World War II. Uh, just a great. It's a card game. You're having to build a deck of your spies, playing their abilities off of each other. Is it the same artist as the Albert Hunt? Albert Monti? Uh, no, it is not. It's not okay. No, it it is different. It's a similar style. This is Albert Monti's. And this is from Salt and Pepper Games. This is all. F I don't yeah, think it is. it is Albert Monty's. Yeah, yeah. Okay, same. There you go. But I love this game. You didn't play it. It's no, a solo I've, game. I've, I've got a preview video uh, I, I on the also, channel. I love the color scheme. Oh, it's fantastic. I think they did a really good job incorporating that flag into and, that. And it's a game that you're kind of building a tableau in front of you, and you're t attacking these missions, and it's just really challenging. I've never been that good at it. But that doesn't mean the game's not awesome. Yeah. So I, I have really enjoyed that. But speaking of David, David Thompson, uh, the last one that I have. Yeah, well, so we'll end we've up. These are the last ones. We've okay. got some Ancients games. So this is 300 from Nuts Publishing. This is their Combat Rations series. Yep. And Port MacArthur, or I'm sorry, Port Arthur, Port Arthur yep. is coming out. And that's the Russo-Japanese kind of naval engagement yes. in, in, in that area. Um, this is Persian Empire versus the Greeks, correct? I'm just trying to remember. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this it's, is it's the 300, it's the it's, Spartans. Yeah, it, Sorry, you know, Battle of Thermopylae is all yep, in this, yep. but yeah, it's, the, it's that Persian War. But it's a cool little card-driven game. The best part about this game is you have to choose yeah. your cards and the number of cards that you're going to get without knowing what you're going to get. So you might say, oh, I'm going to get seven cards because I... What was the other resource you could get? Um, Troops? It's... No, it was... Uh, it's been the, a long time the since we played the, this. The, not the yellow cubes. The brown. Brown? There's a, what, there's a brown stick, was it, which was represents it, was a road. Was it, was it troops? But, like, you have to make these troops. decisions beforehand. Yep. And so it's like, oh, I very desperately need to get some cards to do Th something. That allow me to move. But then if you do that you then are sacrificing other aspects of the game. It was really neat, that choice up front that you got to make. Is this a totally balanced game? Probably not, but it plays in 30 minutes. Yeah, you're going to play it three times, and it, yep. you know, it's best to... Whoever, yeah, I, I, I just really love... It plays in 40 minutes, it says, but I enjoyed this a lot. I think you and I had a great time with this. Uh, and look at it, it's in a cute little box. It even has this clamshell style that's magnetic that's Ooh. magnetic it's Ooh. really nice but i i look forward to that port arthur i i think it's going to be a different unique game uh but kind of in the same system yeah so 300 from nuts publishing yes right yes so uh the last one we'll talk about today is another ancients game so this is uh, a little bit on the on the bigger side this is a pretty hefty box this is also chock full of stuff this is called donning the purple uh, from a company called Tom Pet Games. They make such good games. Uh, they're, they're based out of Norway. Uh, this game also, beautiful artwork, beautiful production. Um, and this is a... It's really a really nice box yeah, too, by the way. It's a three-player game. There's an expansion that has a fourth player. Um, and it's, it's a game of um, ascending to the, to the kind of... The, the empire to, to the throne of Rome, basically. 
Is this the, we played a prototype, did we not? Uh, we played a prototype of but this, yes. This is but a final this is a version. production copy. Yeah. We actually need to probably get this back out and, yeah, we and do. play it. But it's, but it's that classic of you are trying to, you know, fend off barbarians, mm -hmm. but you're also trying to do that and to build up so that you can assassinate the, the emperor yeah. or you can, you know, you can oust the emperor so you can be the emperor, so you can get those points and you can win. But then as soon as you've committed all your resources to doing that, you're quite weak. And yeah. so someone else is going to stab you in the back. It, it, and it, then it's it, great. It's kind of funny. This picture shows the emperor here in, in the front and then you've got like a Brutus type guy that has a dagger out and revealed. And then you have this woman back here that's She's got a knife behind her back. And there's so, like fully just guys yeah. dead on the floor with so blood everywhere. Everyone is looking for that opportunity to jump the leader and become the emperor. Yeah. Because really as the emperor, you're going to score more points and get yourself closer to victory. I, I had a great time with this game. Yeah. I and, really, and again, really did. It, it plays in that, you know, 70 to 90 minute range, but the space needed, you know, it's more than some of these, Yeah. but not much more where you can kind of, slide this out and it's not an intimidating game but it's a way to play a historical game yep. with people uh that is competitive without being obnoxious who did obnoxious. we play this with i don't remember who we played it with that is a great question but we, we played it three player yeah. i don't remember it's been a while but but there are there's also bots that you can use to yeah you can play sub solo it. yeah or two and uh, excellent game. The other game that they've made recently is the... Uh, Holes of Hegra. Oh my gosh. Just such a great little solitaire game. The box is about twice the size yeah, of this. Yeah, and it's a bit bigger with yeah, its map and stuff. Th that's a great game too. Yeah. I, I shot a video and a playthrough and really, really enjoyed that. So yeah. So good. You know, we, we started this video out talking about some uh, monster games that we've got. Yeah. We also have a lot of these little small format games that it's like, cool, we're going to play the Battle of Five Armies today that's going to take a few hours, and then we'll squeeze in a game of, sure. you know, the Grizzled afterwards, or we'll yep. squeeze in a game of 13 days. And doing that helps us to maximize our time, mm -hmm. but also, you, you know, it, it's a way to play a game on a lunch break or to take something on the road when normally yeah. we wouldn't have played a game, but maybe we're going to do that now. Now, some of these small format games serve like a really strong purpose within the gaming sphere. Some people will turn their nose up at a small game because they sure. want something more meaty. That's fine. Well, the, the, not... These are definitely different style of war games, yeah. right? They're more historical games, not traditional hex encounter war games, but they still have a place in our hobby. Yes. They still, I think, they whet your appetite. Yeah, that was all of them. <laughs> and, and they can really be, like you said, kind of the end of the night. This is our nightcap, right? Or, and, and it's still enjoyable. Or it's like the on-ramp. We're right. going to play a little thing, Get and then we're going to move over to this other yep. big game I've got set up now that we're yep. in gaming mode. We or can you can play three or four of these in a row, and you, you've only spent two or three hours. Yeah. And, and once again, several of these I played with my wife. I'm going to take I some. Mean, we're going up on vacation soon. I'm going to take General Orders by David Thompson. Yep. It's a small box game. I just haven't played it yet. That's why I didn't talk about it tonight. But I'm going to take that, and she's already said she would play. So late at night, when everybody else is in bed, we're, we're going to be playing, playing general, war games. general orders. Not embarrassing. <laughs> but that's what we're going to do. She's, a, she's committed. Nice. But yeah, small format war game. If, the, if you have other small little format games or things that you, we would check us, yeah, put them in the comments because we want to know. So I, does everyone else. I have a couple at home that I just haven't played, so I didn't bring them. Do you remember that Ma Maquis one? Little small box. Yeah. It's a solitaire game, but it's about the French uh, revol uh, 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 French resistance. Yeah, I, I do. I've the not. other one, I, I took that game with us to uh, San Diego Historicon. Yeah. That was entrenched. Entrenched. That's a small game, too. I, Very small game. But the other one I took was 1942, and it, it's the aircraft uh, carrier game. It looks really good, but we, we just never got around to playing it. So I've got that... Um, I kind of went on a spree. Like I said, I found a bunch of these on Amazon and they were like 18 bucks and seven. And I was like, hell yeah. And I had like a coupon and yeah. So I bought three or four of them, but they're good. They're good games. They really are. Yes. And it's a way, again, 
to squeeze in a game somewhere where maybe you wouldn't have before, and as such, yeah. you got to play a war game at a time that you didn't, if you might be in a gaming yep. rut, even something like that. Yep. So, thank you very much for sticking with us. Appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander for the PlayersAid.com. And I'm Grant.